Hi guys, welcome to Let's Go Fishing. We are fishing in the heart of Pretoria today in a venue called Rietvlei Dam, the infamous Rietvlei Dam. Traditionally, a very difficult venue to do bank angling, papgoi as we call it. It's normally a specimen venue where they um, fish for bigger fish. But lately, Rietvlei Dam has become more and more of a bank angling venue. There's loads of younger fish that you can fish for and we're going to take you through a couple of things and show you how to fish for them when you visit Ritfly Dam. Ritfly Dam is in a nature reserve. There's strict rules to the nature reserve. When you enter the gate, you're gonna have to adhere to those rules. It's also a very, very popular venue. So if you wanna go to Ritfly, you have to rock up very early. We here midweek and I think there's about 45 to 50 swims available. We're sitting on, I think, number 34. And if there's five open swims in the middle of the week, it's plenty. So very, very popular venue. If you want to do it over a weekend, you can camp, but you will have to be here Friday afternoon to get a spot. So just heads up if you want to visit Reef Play. Awesome fishing venue. We're going to fish. I'm going to bait up, show you what we do and make it easy for you when you visit Replay Dam. One of the main flavors for Replay Dam is the banana flavor. Now in our signature series range, um, the Raptor Oozing Float and the Raptor Hard Float is going to be my choice of bait for my deeper rod, my left hand rod. So, and the reason why I'm putting a hard and a softer float or oozing float is just to determine what the fish want. It's been a while since I've been here. So I'm going to bait up one heart, one oozing float, um, see what they want and after that just adjust to what they want and give them something nice to eat. I'm going to take the oozing float, that's the softer one, put that on my bottom hook, just skin hook it because there's going to be a piece of white dough behind it. Push it on onto the back of the hook, leave the hook open and then on my top hook I'm going to put the hard float. Now the hard float, I'm going to hook a bit more towards the center because the soft, the harder float becomes much softer underwater than the soft float. Just like that. Just a piece of white dough behind each hook. First muti onto the mealy bomb is going to be the raptor for obvious reasons. If they if they like the banana, we give them banana. And then with the raptor, I'm going to put a bit of Spitfire, which is our clove, a bun spiced clove flavor. Not too much of that. A lot of raptor on my hand. More raptor, less Spitfire. The, the stronger one, you always make that a bit less, and then the softer one, you make that a bit more. Let's get it in and see how long it takes. There's a big willow tree on the other side. It's going to be my target for my left hand rod, that's my deeper rod. About 115 meters. There we go. My second rod is ready to go out and on my bottom hook I've got our sweet white garlic float. It just says SWG on the sticker. It is a float that works throughout South Africa. One of the strongest and most potent and definitely the sweetest garlic float that you're going to get on, on the market. And it gets my mouth watering just when I open the bottle and I don't even eat a lot of garlic. Then on the top hook I've got one of our new products, a honey bullet. A very potent honey flavor with loads and loads and loads of flora. If you take that bullet, you throw it into, to, into the water, it looks like a little light that comes on in the water. And then on the mealy bomb, I put some Julius, also one of our new products, Devil's Track. So Ritzley is known for Devil's Track. 
it's something that it's one of my secrets in Ric Flair and it's out in the open now I always catch a lot of fish with it but I do combine it with energy peach and that's what I put over the devil's track so very good combo for Ric Flair make sure when you come here that if there's two things you bring along it's the Julius and the energy peach you can basically combine it with anything else but make sure you get th those two when you visit Ric Flair let's get it in and see if we can catch a quick one with this there's a little willow tree to the right of the big one that's where my short rod's going about 70, 70 to 80 meters let's get it there Leka leka, lovely. That's a rich fly run for you. First run of the morning. It's on that deep rod. <laughs> that didn't take too long. This rod was in the water for maybe 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. And a proper run. First run of the morning, and I'm not even tired. Um, I just want to get it off to off to a quick start and say um, thanks to everybody that has joined our channel, everybody that's sharing our channel, um, spreading the good news, and for all the comments on there, all the positivity on there, guys. We we are quite busy, and we're trying to get to everybody that that has inquiries. So um, if we haven't gotten to you, um, I'll make sure to, to get to everybody at some stage. But just a big thank you from me and Carl. We really appreciate all the support and we promise you, you're just gonna get better and better and better. Things to look at, things to watch. And we vow to keep on teaching you and making bank angling easy for you. This fish is coming quite close. I think I need to get into the water before it goes around the point. That's one of the things of Rick Flay. There's a, there's a barrier because there's hippos here. So hopefully they won't bother us today. This is not a very big fish, but a, a strong fighter. And it nearly took me around the point on the left hand side of the coming in on the right hand side of, of, of this little opening that we're fishing in. And uh, I had to scramble to get the, the angle right to keep it out of the reeds. But now it's in the shallows, the water is quite clear. And I think it just realized now it's coming to the net. Here we go. Nice little fish. Oh, fishy, fishy, fishy. <laughs> About a two kilo fish. Here's our first fish for the morning. Nice little carp, two kilos roundabout, and it picked up on that soft oozing float that was on the bottom hook. So what I'm going to do now is change it around, put the hard float on the bottom and the soft float on top, the oozing float. If it again takes on, on the soft one, I'll just change to two soft ones. But a nice little fish, proper fight, and I must say the water quality in Rick Flay is good as always. I'm going to release this fish, get it back, get my rod back out and catch another one. On my right hand rod I've got basically the same baits with a small change. Um, on the first rod what I did was the soft oozing raptor float on the bottom hook 
now it's on the topic I've got a hard uh, wrap to float now with that small white dough on the bottom hook then the top hook is the oozing float with the small white dough and then again that yellow on the bar is the raptor that's a yellow raptor that I'm fishing with here at this play for a bit of flora and then that red that makes green in the water that's a spitfire that potent bun spice clove dip of ours I must say this combination has been growing on me and I've been fishing it a couple of places and it works well in the Valdam as well as in Blumhoff so wherever there's carp tried it works for me it will definitely work for you okay on my big tree again around about 115 meters oh that's a bit to the right I have another bite on my left hand rod. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Lazy old run. On this rod I switched the oozing float and the hard float around. Um, on the first cast I had the oozing float on the bottom hook. And on this cast I, I got it on the top hook and vice versa with the hard float and the reason why I, I did that is to see what they want sometimes they'll key in on on the soft oozing floats because it's got a bit more flavor and they want a softer bait and sometimes they'll just key on on the harder float that's got a bit more buoyancy and that stands up further from the bottom but there is also always um, the possibility of the bigger fish choosing either or um, one, one of the baits that, that they would prefer on the day. And the nice thing is it's never the same. Tomorrow you can rock up into the same swim, onto the same spot, and it would be totally different. And that's why we keep on coming back and that's why they keep it, call it fishing and not catching. So that's the reason why I do it. If you're not sure about soft floats and hard floats, that's how you try it, try it out, see if it works for you. And that's how you eliminate what they don't want. If they keep on picking up the one and then the other, then you just keep them both on, on the trays. This fish feels a bit better. It's going around the point. I'm going this side to create an angle. To get it around the reeds, let's go net it. This is a much better fish. That's going in the right direction. This might be touching three and a half kilos. Ooh, broad fish. Guys, carp care is something that's very important to us and I haven't got an hooking mat here today. And when you haven't got an hooking mat, this is how you do it. We've shown it a lot of times. Handle the fish in the water, pinch the net between your legs, um, rest your rod reel inside the net keep it out of the water and then you've got both your hands free I already unhooked this fish now you can hold it up for a nice photo over the net if you drop it you drop it into the water and the fish won't get hurt look at this lovely fish three and a half maybe touching 3.8 kilos what an awesome fish. This is going to be a very big fish. It's broad across the body. And a proper rig flake carp. That last fish we just caught, which was the biggest for the day so far, jumped out of my hands, over the net, into the water, before we could properly discuss what happened. 
and it took on the bottom hook again which was the hard raptor oozing or hard raptor float not the oozing hard oozing float so I'm baiting up same thing again let's see which hook it takes my left hand rod which is my deeper rod is ready to go back out again exactly the same hook bait on the bottom hook that hard raptor float with a piece of white dough on the top hook the soft oozing raptor float with a piece of white dough and then that yellow is my yellow raptor that red is our spitfire very potent clove dip works basically with every fruity dip in our range and even here at Ritzlay I'm getting it back out to that 115 meter mark and see if I can catch another decent fish one that won't jump out of my hands let's get it out my big willow tree is my target I'm taking the mark on the line it goes out and I stop it just had a proper run on this short rod and it doesn't want to take it again this is the first one on the short rod missed one earlier so we'll see what what hook it took on the one hook we've got the bullet and on the other one we've got that sweet white garlic float with the Julius and the energy peach the Julius is that strong strong potent new devil's track tip that's taking everything by storm at this stage let's see how the fish of red fly looks that dares to go near Julia's this isn't a very big fish but a pleasure and a privilege because in the not too distant past it was a big challenge to catch a fish at reed fly on the bank angling method because it's known as a specimen dam there's also a lot of bass in the dam for the guys that want to do bank bashing um, lots of guys come here just to bass fish and there's some proper fish that has come out over the past couple of years so reed fly is quite close to basically everything it's not a bad fish second biggest for the day Apparently there's a lot of them here The nets over here Swim it into the net There we go By the looks of it, it's on the bottom hook The top hook is hooked into the net here So it picked up on that sweet white garlic float With the piece of white dough behind it And it munched it properly. It's a proper, proper hook set. There's a nice little fish. Also over two kilos. And it's going to jump. And that's the reason why we do it over the water. I could somehow feel it getting ready to jump show it to you once again and then release it come on now proper fish proper bank angling fish thank you on my right hand rod I'm ready to go again on the bottom hook just that single SWG oozing float no dough no nothing behind it on the top hook um, a different way of putting on a bullet all I did is squeezed it flat rolled it into a little worm and I pressed it around the hook just like a, a little white dough and then on the bomb I've got that Julia's that potent potent devil's rack with the energy peach that goes over it and the reason why I fish it like this um, I started fishing it like this in Bloomhoff and then it spilled over to the Val Dam 
then to Groedraai, and then to different, a couple of different other places. And that's how I fish it. It's just confidence. If you haven't got the Julius, use the energy pitch with normal clean Devil's Track or our Devil's Track spray. That also works very well. Let me get it in and see how long it takes this time. All right, my small willow tree, here we go. Look, 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 look. Ooh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Lovely. Let's get it in. There we go. On one of our previous episodes on Let's Go Fishing, there was a question of one of the bank anglers that asked, I must please explain my red flay trace and the reason why I use it the way I use it and make it the way I make it. And it's actually quite simple. Um, the trace was initially designed to catch smaller fish um, because we are competitive anglers and we we like to catch a lot of fish. So the main line or the shaft line of the trace basically consists of a 24 pound or 0 0.40 main line with one sliding swivel and an anchoring swivel at the bottom of the weight and then um, all that that goes with that and that's what makes it very very efficient is the light hook links that we use we use a 0 0.20 or a 0.21 hook hook link that's normally seven pounds and uh, the reason why we use it as light as that it allows a lot of natural movement on the bait and it's very sensitive so when the fish fish actually picks it up they don't feel that there's something wrong it feels natural to them and that's why we use the lighter hook links if you use the lighter hook links you will get a lot more bites we fished it against each other um, for instance a, a trace with 10 pound hook links and one with seven pound hook links and the seven pound outfish that 10 pound nine out of ten times you just catch a lot more fish using it that way when i get this fish out i'll show you how that trace looks but it's going around the point so let me go get it One of the reasons, the other reasons that I'm using lighter hook links is that I just lost a hook link in the reeds. That fish went around the point and it broke my bottom hook link off. That hook link must have hooked into the reed and as the fish shaked, luckily this one did not part but that one did. And if I had thicker hook links on, um, I might have lost both or everything, the fish, or I would have had to go in and go fetch that fish. That's why the lighter hook links helps you with that as well. Let me show you the fish, then I'm going to show you when I repair this, how easy it is to do it. Look at this beautiful fish. Touching three kilos. Man oh man, red flay is really treating us well. I must say the deeper rod is pushing out the bigger fish. And I might even go a bit deeper to see if we can really get a big one. Proper, proper fish. Proper real run. And what a privilege. This one took on this the oozing float again. So I'm not going to change anything. I'm just going to keep those two. One hard, one oozing float. The raptor on the hooks. And just fish away. Just enjoy the day with it. And normally I would have changed now to just two oozing floats. But what a privilege. This is my hook link that parted. And I think it broke off in the reeds like I said. So easy to fix. I'll just snip that off. And then 
I've got a couple of hooklings that are prepared, pre-prepared. They're already tied up like this in the little bank bag and it's marked as a number one as I'm fishing number ones today. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to take one single hook out of here. One. I don't need to take them all out. Slide it through with a normal clinch knot which brings me to the knots if you want to know how to tie knot just go onto our channel we did a video on knots there the main five knots that you need to know how to make and this is one of them just pull it tight set the knot oh there goes the other rod lovely all right there we go and what I was saying earlier, we're going to let that one go for a bit. The lighter hook links allows for a lot of natural movement on the bait. So when a, when a carp comes onto your feed, they'll normally blow and they'll normally suck. And with the light hook link and the baits that we use, um, they will suck it in. They don't have to physically pick it up from the bottom and that's why this trace catches a lot of fish i'm going to catch this fish windy 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 it came back now oh where's my fish where's my fish oh there's my fish here we go we try to keep it real and well, let's go fishing no time to pre-feed no time to do anything that you can't do when you decide to go fishing so we rock up, we fish without pre-feeding. We do it like you guys would do it. In Afrikaans, we've got a nice saying. We do it like Jan Alleman does it. Like the normal oak out there does it. And uh, um, we pride ourselves in doing that. And one of the things that I've done in the past to make it easier for myself is um, I've developed something to use with my feed to basically create an instant feeding spot and um, in our previous episode on let's go fishing we fished Ratsagai Kral and we showed how to make a feeding spot I didn't do that today um, there just wasn't enough time but one of the products that I add to my feed is the level 5 feed mix it's something that's taken off it's something that's really working well it's a potent sweet corn mix that you just add a little bit into your feed bucket and you've got that forever forever maize flavor in your feed for the whole day so if you haven't checked it out check that out try it it works for me it'll definitely work for you i'm going to concentrate on this fish and land it the shallow rod is definitely producing smaller fish i think i'm going to throw it once more then i'm going to hand this rod over to my cameraman let him fish on the side and I'm going to take another long rod to see if I can snag a couple of big ones there we go although it's a lot smaller than, than the previous fish it still remains a pleasure proper red flake carp they know what to do when they take the reel they take a lot of line and it's always always fun and games Thank you, boyki or girly, whatever you are. You could call your boot or your sis. One more cast on the short rod before I trade it in for a longer rod. Exactly the same baits with a small change on the bottom hook. That SWG um, oozing float. That's the sweet white garlic with the white dough. And then on the top hook, what I did is I put a small little white dough on the hook, and I used that honey bullet just as a backing and then the Julius and the Energy Peach on the bomb. It looks like a lot of dip. It's really not a lot. The Energy Peach, when it mixes with the Julius, just have the ability to, to spray over the bomb. So it's actually not a lot. It washes off very quickly, but it gives a lot of flavor and a lot of color in the water. And I think that's why we might be catching the smaller fish. So, but whenever you battle, that's what you do. When you want to catch bigger fish, especially here in Red Fly, I think there's two things you can do. Use the same combo, throw it a bit deeper, or just put less 
off the, the dip onto the onto the bait and you will definitely catch him. Let's get it in and see how long it takes this time. The previous one was in for around about 12 to 15 minutes. Let's see if we can duplicate that. All right, let's get it in. It's a bit to the left. My left hand rod that produces the bigger fish is ready to go back out again but I'm going to do exactly the same, slightly different. Um, only anglers will understand what I'm going to do. Um, I've got the same hook baits on again on the bottom hook. I've got the hard raptor float. So I took away the dough so I'm just going to push the hook with the float into the bomb just like that preferably where there's no dip and then I'm going to push the soft one into the bomb right next to it I don't like doing this but normally it works and the fish are biting nicely today and I am a person that needs to get confidence in something before I would try it in a tournament and today is that day that might just give me the confidence let's get it in Oh, big fish. The shallow rod on about 85 meters is starting to take over now with the Julius and the Energy Peach and that sweet white garlic float. And on that top hook, I've got that new honey bullet. It hasn't picked up that bullet yet, but I know when it picks it up, it's gonna it's gonna be a proper fish. I just want to ask you guys um, if you can please tell your friends and family about our channel. Also, if if this is your first time on our channel, please hit the subscribe and notification bell on YouTube. It doesn't cost anything to su subscribe to, to our channel um, but you will be notified when new programs drop and we are also going to do a couple of other things. Um, we've done a, a video on knots, five basic knots that you need to know how to make um, and if you can make those five knots you can do all types of fishing. Sea fishing, freshwater fishing, anywhere in the world you can go fishing because those are the knots that, that you basically need. Other than that, we're going to do um, some baits on. We're going to show you how to make some does, different baits. Um, there's a replay trace on, on our channel as well. You can view that as well. And at some stage, we're going to do different types of fishing. And we'll show you that as well. Everything you need, everything you need to prepare to do that. And um, this channel is going to grow very big. So hit that notification bell, subscribe and be part of the let's go fishing family it's going to be big this fish is going around the point it's kiting to the right now i'll have to get into the water to make sure it doesn't snag me in the reeds
That short rod must have heard me threatening that I'm going to take it out. Look at this proper fish. This is a thick fish, like we call it. And it's going to be a very big fish. Three and a half kilos easily, 3.8 kilos. Proper red flame muscle. It picked up on that, um, on that honey bullet with a white doe. First one on the top hook. I said something special was going to happen with that Julius and the energy peach. Just simply awesome. Thank you fella. Oh, that's not nice. We wanted to film you with a slow swim away. Let's catch another one. Well, after that nice fish on the short rod, I decided to keep it in. I wanted to pass it over to the cameraman, but no, 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 you're not getting the rod. Um, it's exactly the same. Sweet white garlic float, oozing float on the bottom hook, little white dough on the top hook, that white dough with that new honey bullet, potent, potent flora, looks like a little light bulb that goes on when it goes into the water. The Julius and the Energy Peach on the Millibomb with my little stopper dough on top here just to keep that top hook next to the bomb while it when it's going down. It if I throw it onto the spot around about 85 meters, it doesn't lay for longer than 15 minutes. And this rod is like I said, it's taking over now. So let's get it out there again and hopefully catch a bigger one because as the day goes on, they keep on getting bigger. Let's hope the trend continues. My small willow is my target. Another lazy old run. Keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. It's going, it's going. <laughs> oh yes. The wind's blowing into us now and the visibility in the water has gone off a bit. There's some algae in the water. And I must say, I like this color of water. This is proper fishing water. If it's too clean, it tends to get difficult. But this is carp fishing water. Come, 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 come. Top hook. And I think that equals it out for the raptor float. Equal amount, I think it's four fish on the oozing float now and four fish on the hard float. So either or, fish them both, they work in red flay. Look at the colors on the, the tail of this fish. Awesome fish, proper, proper. Man, what a pleasure. I'm going to release this fish, catch one more, and then we're heading home. Here is on a run, mate. Yo 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 This This run is close to a Rurikopi's real run Wow This is our last fish for this episode And I must say it's been a jewel We've had proper proper real runs The whole morning It's only I think it's maybe half past 12 now and we've had more than enough fish. Didn't put everything on camera, but um, more than enough. And I think the the shallow rod came into it and I fished that 85 meters with the shallow rod, only with a mark on the line. You can't line clip here. With, with these fish taking line like this, um, and there's really big fish in here. So if, if you line clip, you might run into trouble, just mark it. When it goes out, just, just stop it and be ready for, for that big fish or any fish when it comes. The Julius and the Energy Peach was by far the best for the day with that sweet white garlic float. 
small dough and then the honey bullet on top with a small little white dough in front and then on the left rod we caught quality fish i must say i think the quality on the left rod the deeper rod was a bit better um, with the, the double raptor floats the oozing and the hard one and the raptor and the spitfire that's all you need when you come to to red flay um, just do what we did fish at 85 meters if i come here again i'll most probably fish both rods there um, because we did pick up some decent fish on the on the shallow rod as well this fish is going around the point i don't want to lose it i want this to be the last one because it feels proper let me go get it i'll show you how it looks now Here we go. Oh, not a very big fish, but a proper one again. And I must say, they have a lot of fight in them. I'm just going to go a bit shallower to unhook this fish. What a privilege. Guys, if you come to Red Flay, just keep it simple. Do what we did. And that's basically what I do every time I come to Red Flay. Yeah, year in year out doesn't matter the season keeps on working in winter time you just fish a bit deeper but the same baits work winter and summer there's absolutely no difference look at this beautiful fish thank you fella Guys, we came to the end of an awesome day's fishing here at Red Flay. And I must say, Red Flay really surprised me. Not only with the quality and the amount of fish that we caught through the day, but with how easy it actually is in doing normal bank angling and just applying the basics. It's fishing on a spot, using the same dips the whole time, and just whenever you feel you there's the, the bait's in the water for too long, you just pull out, put it back into the same spot. 15 minutes later, there's another fish. We basically had a fish every 15 to 20 minutes for the whole morning. And when, when you're filming, that's awesome fishing. Um, I think it's easy to, to catch 50 to 60 fish here in a day if you really apply yourself and, and fish on the same spot. There is some rules at the gate. Make sure when you come to Red Flay that you adhere to it. It's catch and release only, no fish is allowed out. Um, and remember, when you watch this, please tell your friends. If you're not subscribed to our channel, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. A lot of guys don't know what that bell is for. It's every time a new episode drops, you will be notified. If you don't hit it, you won't be notified. There goes my last rod that's in the water. We'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Ooh.